Greetings, Douglas County. My name is Kelly Robinson, Vice Chair of the Douglas County Board of Commissioners and Commissioner of the Second District. I want to welcome you to the May District Dialogue. We've got a great show today. Um, it's something that's near and dear to my heart, which is our seniors. Obviously, seniors are the ones who put me back in office for my fourth term, and I'm always grateful for their wisdom, not necessarily their presence and their vote, but what they bring to us as society. Um, recently, they had a meeting. Um, I want to give a special shout out to Ms. Sylvia Ankra of the Golden Years, um, a great group of individuals that meet monthly at Deer Lake Park around 10 o'clock in the morning, and um, they've been meeting consistently and talk about matters important to the county. I was a special guest recently in which I was invited to come and talk about two things, transit as well as affordable housing. And so this particular episode of the show is a special edition in which you're going to be taken inside that meeting and which I'm a guest speaker, uh, but it's going to be very valuable to hear the sentiments of our seniors. Because every now and then we get away from our seniors or other people in our population uh, within the county that while we're talking from the courthouse, we may not be reaching them. And this meeting is so important. It, it, it speaks to where our current state of being is. And I'm excited about it because it was one of those, I got it. So I want you guys stay tuned and pay attention to this very good meeting of the golden years. Thank you, and we'll be right back. Again, for those who don't know me, I'm Kelly Robinson. Actually, this is my fourth four-year term. Um, coming into office um, during the Obama administration back in 2008. Um, and in 2008, it actually um, happened to be on the same day that my mother's birthday, November 5th, was 2008. So how about a celebration that was? Her son was elected to his first term and it was her birthday. So I'm always, um, I'm, I'm, I'm supportive, and this is important, um, to, to my mother and that generation, which is why I'm here. Right? There's two sides to me. There's the, the fire side, which is my father, but the, the, the better part of me is my mother. And it's the seniors, and it, it, it's women. It's respect, right? It's advocating and fighting for, right? So I'm going to get into some stuff because, again, my job is an advocate. As you guys know, there's a president and there's what? Congress. There's a governor. There's the General Assembly. There's a mayor, city council. There's a chair and a commission. So I'm a legislator. I don't do day to day. I don't fill potholes. I, I, all I do is, what, appropriate me. I advocate on behalf of the citizens. This is important. As you see me, and I have um, the administration in here, and we need to hear from them, and you're going to hear information that they're going to share. Because every now and then, we do have to be accountable. We also have to acknowledge times where we have failed or missed a mark. If nothing broke my heart more than for Ms. Medina to come to me and for me to realize she did not know what was going on with our bus system. When she was a lady back in 2009 in my very first town hall, says, Commissioner Robinson, we need to bring this out here. I said, well, not yet, not yet, I'm coming. She said, Commissioner Robinson, but I said, okay, give me time. About 2015, we had the transportation study, it was just about time. And so it came to pass in obviously 18, and then we rolled it out in 19. But, but here we are, somebody who had almost 14 years, what, 13 years, who talked about this, who is, and I'm forever endeared to that I have to give respect for because she planted that seed that manifested and for the administration to not have the citizens and our seniors know about this system. And so sometimes you got, and she was very delicate when she talked about the problem, staff need y'all to hear this. That there is, um, sometimes we can communicate in our own world, but it doesn't mean that we're reaching anybody. Everybody's not enabled, I mean, um, so in love with technology and look at my post and look at me, look at me, look at me, but are you communicating? And that's the fundamental issue we're going to talk about today. That's the context of why I'm having this. Yes, I want to serve you guys. Yes, I want y'all to eat well and stuff. But no, y'all, they, they know I'm about to kick in. Like, no, you, you've got to listen. I mean, these, they're here because they're like, but we, they have no clue. And there's nothing the administration can say to say, guys, we missed that. Oh, we got a bus and we got this, like, guys. No, you don't. And these are people that really need it, who want to take advantage of it. Now, we know it's a baby, three years old. No, you know, some of you guys, 
You come from more advanced systems, I get it. I really do. Right, but this is the baby, this ain't New York, this ain't Philly, this ain't, no, no, this ain't LA. It's a baby system, so it's gotta grow up, right? It's gotta grow from an infant, which is three years, to maybe your teens, to maybe adult, right? So we, we you, you guys know life. You're singers, you know how things progress. So respectfully, you understand where it is. But still, you need to know the condition of the baby. Staff, if you're babysitting, shouldn't people who put it in place know, oh, oh, how's my baby? What's going on? And so we're gonna get into that. So I, I, I just want to do that as an opening and acknowledgement. Uh, and again, I appreciate the prayer, the invocation this morning about peace. Because again, that's, that, I'm here to serve. I mean, so I, I understand your concerns. And, it, and, and so to the staff, y'all need to hear this and they're recording this. I'm, I'm, I'm broken, like, guys, we missed this. And while I, I was aware, it's like, we really missed this. We went for three years. Look at us communicate. Look at us communicate. Who are you communicating to? The same 15,000 people that's on our email list? But there's 85 other thousand adults, including these seniors, that, that, and, and not online. Who, who may not get caught up in the, the, look at my app. We missed it because these people that actually said they wanted it. We missed it. We did not communicate in the way they needed it. We missed it. And I'll, I'll take responsibility for that. That says, oh no, we, we, I'll take it one time. But it won't be another. Yeah, you, you get it from your mom, this old school. Like, you get it one time, you'll never do it again. So, y'all won't, but, 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 I, but trust me, no, no, but it's, it's, it's respecting your generation. It says, okay, we get it, but what are you gonna do about it? And, and the thing is, you shouldn't have to fight, Ms. Medina, you didn't have to have come at me like you did, but I need to feel it. I mean, oh, I felt her for all y'all, like, oh my goodness. But it's like, okay, man, we missed it that much? And my staff is oblivious. My, my, my vendors are oblivious. So we pay too much money in overhead and staff for us to miss. The very people who actually create this that they got contracts and jobs for. Look, I don't play, y'all know this when I get this mode. No, you guys are the ones that put me back in office. The seniors and my sisters. That's who put me back in office. That's who I advocate for. Right, please, I'm, I'm not, they know that. I'm not the administration, no, I don't get it twisted. I may work up there, but please, I represent the citizens. So I, I got y'all back. So now, I won't go long on this. I wanted to do that just as an introduction because I'm always sensitive to time and I know the food is right around the corner. But this is a TL. And we're gonna talk about two things. We are gonna talk about mobility. What is the state of our actual system? And we will get into this housing because those are two things. Those are major issues. How do you get around and where do I live? Right, I mean, what you, you talk about affordable housing now, mom, we'll get, I can say, right. What happens when we age to a certain point, like, I don't wanna maintain no more. See, it was called life stages. Like, you, you, you move through, right? At some point, like, look, I just want something that's nice, that's affordable stuff, you know, I, I, we understand fixed income, like, no, y'all are frugal. Y'all know how to manage y'all stuff. Y'all know what y'all doing this stuff, and so we gotta provide options for you. We can't worry about the narrative and what people got to say. You gotta do what's right. Take a position. So you know I got that as well. So with that being, uh, I won't believe it um, anymore because I'm gonna help uh, facilitate this as we go along. So first up, where is um, um, Danielle? Why don't you, where are you at, Miss Cherry? Right here, sir. Yes, come on down. Uh, Miss Cherry is with the collaborative firm, and she's gonna give you a, a very nice update, and I know she's, she's gonna kill it. And so please give them some information and I'll come right behind you, okay? Yes, sir, thank you. You got it. Good morning again, and uh, Miguel, and uh, of course, Ron, and Ms. Tiffany, Stuart Stanley. Uh, as Daniel prepared, so Michael Hatchow, uh, Ms. Robertson, good morning to you. And, Ms. Medina, uh, ma'am, let me just tell you, we've met before, and I would just say in this room today, we have superstars. When, when Commissioner Robinson and I met back in the mid-90s, I could tell he was trained right. Uh, Frank, he was humble and giving, and sometimes we see his, his intentionality to make it right, and 
sometimes he gets a little emotional, just like I do. Because like my grandmother lived in the church until she was 98. When I was a commission Fulton, I was the senior's advocate because of my grandmother. And, and she would always, she would always say, my, she called me, not my, Michael, just listen to us. Listen to us. Michael, not Michael, but Michael. <laughs> and so Kevin, she said, Michael, just listen to us. I listen. And I want to just say, Ms. Uh, uh, Bedina, thank you for your leadership. And thank you for making sure that the elected people don't forget where they come from. And that's not a bad thing, it's a good thing. And I think, and I think Commissioner Robinson, Commissioner Robinson has always said, you know, we gotta listen better. Some of the blame comes to us, because we're helping the commission. So uh, Daniel and I, we take some of that blame too. We take, we're gonna take a whipping today too. Because you get better when you listen and improve. And so today's purpose, and Danielle, she comes from a family of, of seniors as well, and we know how to listen. So today we had a hot, you know, Commissioner Robinson and Miguel and others at the county got this going. So the first step is to get it going. The next step is to stand back and, and make it better. So we need your help today to stand back and make it better. Let me just say this, you know, Commissioner Robinson was kind of modest. What he did say, Mother, is that Douglas County was in the, on the forefront of this process throughout this region. They were recognized throughout the state. While he doesn't want to beat his chest on that, because he wants to serve, Douglas County has been a leader, working with Miguel and his staff and others in their run to provide this for seniors. So, but help us make it better. Uh, we got a nice PowerPoint, but you know what, at the end of the day, tell us what's on your mind. Small things matter. No matter how small it is, you may say, adjust this piece here to make it better. So do not hold back. Uh, I, when I came in, I almost went across the street to get, get a whipping stick so you could whip us a little bit. You know, back in the day, you get a whipping stick and make it better. But seriously, use your whipping stick today, Ms. Medina, to help us make it better for those, but not just for y'all, for y'all, for those that will follow. So again, at this point, Daniel's gonna come, but we had to listen and make it better. So thank you for having us, but thank you for having us make it better. Because at the end of the day, if we don't make it better, we all have failed. So Commissioner Robinson, congratulations. We're going to make it better. Because one day, Kevin and I are going to be in the same room. We're going to be playing cards and talking trash. And, 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 and if you make it better for you, you, you guys, Kevin and I, we, we, we can have play bingo and eat cards and have good food. So you know, make it, let's make it better. Thank you. Thank you. Danielle, it's yours. Are we here to listen and make it better. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you all for your time. I will be brief, but I will be to the point. So, I, as Michael said, I'm Danielle. I do the marketing and engagement um, on behalf of Connect Douglas. And I do remember, Ms. Medina, you came to all the outreach, um, the public out, uh, open houses. Um, even to the point I remember you in De at a DeKalb meeting as well, because I remember you, you always had cool glasses. So the last time I saw you was pre-pandemic in February of 2020. We were in this room yes. doing an open house, a public open house, and you were there. So I appreciate and applaud your consistency for your fellow residents and yourself. So I thank you, because I remember you from then. Um, uh, so good to see you in about 18 months to two years. <laughs> so I'll briefly go through this. Let me get out the way. Um, if this is just a transit services overview. People think that Connect Douglas is just the bus system. Oh, no. It's been in existence way beyond that. The bus system, as uh, Commissioner Robinson said, is three years old. Not even three years old yet. June will be three years old that birthday. So let me go through briefly all transit services. Yes, people need the bus, but may need some other things too that, that are public transit um, services for Douglas County. Brief overview, headquarters, as you may know, we call it the MMTC, the Multimodal Transportation Center, because it's more things. It's not just the bus. It's over at Doris Road, around the corner from the courthouse. I apologize if I'm in anyone's way. Uh, Connect Douglas operated uh, 1986, so as I mentioned, kind of been around for a little while under the name Rideshare. 
and uh, verbatim Connect Douglas is a public transit and mobility services division of the Douglas County Board of Commissioners and operates under the transportation division. So I say mobility service, services, again, I'm going to reiterate not just bus. The history, I won't go through everything, but you see there, the ride share service, ride share in general, launched in February of 1986. As you see to date, the multimodal transportation center expanded that, if you're looking at the building, all of that to the right. Um, all of this was May of 2021. So things did not slow, as Commissioner Robinson said um, at times, uh, uh, he said, I believe, I'll paraphrase during one of the Board of Commissioners meetings, is you, you gotta gotta build when things are quiet. So that uh, expansion happened in um, over the pandemic. Other things, uh, the fixed bus route, uh, route launched in June of 2019, and there are others that you see. So Connect Douglas and slash rideshare has been around since 86. Some key services, and again, I'm, I'm speaking in general, and please keep things um, pre-pandemic as I talk about all services, and then I'll go into what is and is not available due to COVID protocol. There's a commuter van pool. Pre-pandemic, it was over 40 uh, uh, van pool uh, locations, and it was about 300 people riding that at the time. What they call Freedom to Go, and I'll get into this a little bit later, is a voucher program. Uh, the Greta bus, that big express bus, you can go all the way into Atlanta and the park and ride locations, including the MMTC, the Modal, the Transportation Center, uh, are locations for the, like the Greta. And that's the greater um, regional toll of authority bus that you may see on the highways. There's even carpool matching lanes, again, pre-COVID, and then the park and ride locations. I'll just breeze through this. Um, commuter van pool, it ceased operations March of 2020 for obvious reasons um, due to uh, COVID uh, protocol. Uh, so what's, uh, what uh, staff are doing are updating policies to make sure it's safer when um, the, the van pool comes back. So that's what's happening right now for van pool, but that is not in, in existence today, right now. Uh, fixed uh, route bus service. Again, launched in June of 19. There are four routes, 10, 20, 30, and 40. There are bus route brochures in the lobby. Please feel free to take anything on that info table. And there's other things on your, um, your tables, but I just wanted to point those out. They're up here as well for your viewing pleasure. And uh, one thing that came in from those open house meetings was uh, flex rides. It's up to one mile outside of the route. So again, a baby system, it's within the area. It has to start somewhere. So sometimes we hear, oh, we can't get to the, the bus. It's, it's too far. There's flex rides. You can up to one mile um, from the, a scheduled route. And there are free transfers, meaning I got to get on the 10. And you know what? I want to go to Arbor Place Mall. I got to get on the 20. It's very easy. When I say transfers, they're seamless. I don't want to overwhelm anybody. Of that transfer, you can get off of one bus and get on the other bus. And those are free. I know Ms. Medina knows, you go to any other major location, or even, not even major location, any other city, any other neighborhood, transfers cost. They're free within Connect Douglas. There's free Wi-Fi. There is a camera in the front for your safety. So you can sit down, um, watch the Netflix, talk to a family member, and get to your location. And the buses are out front too, so you can see for yourself. Here are some highlights. So bus fares are 250, which is very comparable. MARTA is 250 as well. Comparable for the region, the area, actually even the country. There is a 10 trip uh, ticket, meaning punch, 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 meaning one trip, one trip, one trip, up to 10. Uh, you see the price there, $25. The 31 day pass is, is kind of the bang for the buck. And you see that asterisk, and I'll, I'll, I'll mention that in a second. And then the reduced fares. Um, there are reduced fares applications outside as well, so you can fill that out. For those who apply, if you're going through a tough time, you're on a fixed income, reduced fare application is for you. Um, yes, it's online, but you can print it out, fill it out while you're here too. So with that reduced fare application, instead of 250, you're paying a dollar. Instead of 10, uh, $25, you're paying 10. And again, that 31 day pass, that's the bang for the buck. You gotta go to both Kroger's. Or excuse me, yeah, both Kroger's. You gotta go to both Walmarts, go to Arbor Place Mall, you can go to Target. I like 
uh, there's these chips and Aldi's that I like, and there's soda water. I like going to Aldi, so I'll go to Aldi's, Kroger, and Walmart. You can do that all on the bus. As many times as you want. You want to go eight places in one day? Go eight places in one day for $31. And that's for the whole month. Definitely beats Uber or waiting for somebody to come pick you up. You can go when you want to. And the discounts are offered for seniors, 60 plus, students, and individuals with mobility concerns or mobility challenge. And again, those uh, applications are up front. And then free for children, four and under. So if you have grandchildren and you want to just spend the day, you get your 31 day pass, take them all over, and they can go to sleep <laughs> when you're done. Again, here are the routes that I'll breeze through because they're up in the front. One thing I highly want to point out, this has been in existence, but due to COVID, it was on pause, and we want to reintroduce ourselves, Connect Douglas, to you all. We've been away, Ms. Vanilla, I haven't seen you in 18 months. I'm Danielle, how you doing? <laughs> nice to see you again. On your tables are, um, this is this flyer, excuse me, travel training sessions. So if you don't know about the bus, you want to learn about how to ride, how to get around, please call us up. Please give me your information. I will be your advocate or liaison. This Golden Years group can come together and get a one-on-one. -on -one. Ride the route, get comfortable, see how easy it is. And that's what we call the travel training sessions. And the information, again, is on the flyer at your tables. And I'll briefly, um, hopefully this can, want to show you our how-to video. going through because it's on the website and I'll show you individually within the travel training sessions you'll see the video it's on the website however it literally goes through how to ride the bus get around who to call meaning the connect Douglas then you can get a live person you don't always have to go to the website call the phone number and everything is on your on the tables someone can physically talk to you and say how do I get from my house to our place mall how do I get to Target and they can tell you which bus to ride. If the schedule's a little confusing, no problem. Just give them a call. One other highlight that I want to uh, talk about very quickly, ADA Paratransit. Uh, ADA, American Disabilities Act. Anyone who is mobility challenged, we need to serve them. It's a public transit service for everybody. So ADA Paratransit, there's an application for that. So if you can't physically sit, stand at a bus stop, and again, benches are on the docket. I won't speak to the operations side of things, but if you can't stand at the bus stop or at some point sit or um, uh, are unable to assist yourself on and off the bus, ADA Paratrans is for you. I don't want to compare, but you all have seen the modern mobility or heard the term. It's very similar to that, but this is only within Douglas County because Douglas County is unique to Douglas County. And that's a curb to curb service. So let me be clear about that, the differences. Fixed bus route, you stand at a bus stop, it goes fixed route. ADA paratransit, you get your schedule, um, get on the schedule, curb to curb. Other tra transportation voucher program, that is the application out front as well that you can fill out. So with the voucher program, it provides uh, transportation assistance for seniors 65 and older and individuals for disability. 65 and older, individuals with disability or mobility challenge. And for $10, that's an equivalent to $100. I don't know about you, but I'm from Ohio, people on EBT cars, but I'm an 80s baby, so there were food stamps. So food stamps, it's like, all right, you're in a tight spot, you get a, a book of food stamps for a certain amount. Similar thing, if you are um, uh, in a tight spot, Finances are finances. We all are in an endemic right now. If that, if this program is for you, no worries. We can help you out. For $10, it's an equivalent to 100 vouchers. For $20, it's an equivalent for $200 in vouchers. And that transportation is provided by independent operators. 
So someone who is, is a, you'll see it, they're branded, they're designated, and they'll come get you if, um, for the transportation voucher program. So here's some information, and all of that is out on your tables and at the front. Please, please, please sign up for the things that you may want to do, or please leave a name and a phone number or an email, and uh, we'll personally get back to each and every one of you. But the main reason why we're here is to listen. So what, um, if you don't already have, what I want to do is put out comment cards, and while I'm doing that, I want to introduce um, some folks in the room. So for Connect Douglas staff, if you don't mind standing up and giving a wave, there's Miss Francis right there in the pretty teal. Jessica Hunley right there um, uh, waving her hand. She is the mobility coordinator. So she helps out with those uh, transportation voucher programs, ADA paratransit, um, all senior programs, mobility services. Uh, Ron, who is our interim manager um, over there in the tan jacket, and then Sharma. She was a uh, van pool slash programs coordinator. So I just want to thank them. And then maybe turn it over. Let's see what's so please, um, oh yes ma'am, oh yes ma'am, we're here to listen. So what I want to do is pass out these comment cards. There's actually a and a I just wanted to know who you will eventually be asking questions to. Let's give her a hand clap, everybody, please. All right, so we're gonna keep this going because I know we're gonna eat in a minute, but I wanna, I wanna build this up for a moment. Um, two things, I've, there are some additional staff here. Tiffany Stewart Stanley, she's the Assistant County Administrator. Tiffany, where are you? Right here. Right. There's Tiffany there. We've got Miguel Valentine. Valentine, he is the Director of our Transportation. Miguel, where are you? Over here. Okay. we got Miguel. Um, you know, somebody, I got Rick Martin, our Director of Communications. And of course, a lot of you guys already met Wendy Caldo, my, my legislative aide. Wendy, where are you? I'm in the back. All right, over there. So really quickly, because that was a lot of information, and this is, this is part of the, okay, so, what did y'all see? What's missing? I'd like to hear some questions because one of the things is that while we describe the route, it's one thing to talk about the route, it's another, what was your experience? So for my operator that's here, like for example, if I get on the bus, the thing about fixed routes versus Uber is that the fixed route, as you guys know traditionally, is on time. I can count on it. It's supposed to be at this location, at this moment, I used to ride the bus downtown to Richard's and stuff, my first job, right? I know I'd be out to the 88 Camp Creek. It was guaranteed, it was assured. Uber, you may get it, you may not, they late, can't get through, like, okay, it's like, I'm waiting on them. That fixed route brings stability. It's, it's stable, and that's why the importance, we're gonna talk about, to get the public narrative. This is just us. So, um, example, also when I get out there, the question becomes like, well, are you going to be on time and are you going to stop? <laughs> right? In other words, like, well, don't you see me? Now, I can't see you, but don't I'll step out in the street, but to my operator. So if I have complaints or suggestions that y'all not picking up my seniors or anybody, that's going to be an issue. Now, we've got some data that shows our ridership went really up. It was going up before the pandemic. It dropped off. But there's no Trust me, we're going to be okay. It's not going anywhere. But my point being is that, okay, but what's the excuse for not taking care of what you're supposed to do reasonably? My last point is when you talk about um, the buses, and I, and I, guys, I do get it, um, which is about, um, I don't even know where to get on that bus. The signs, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you the real story. Admittedly, when we put this bus up, this system up, there was huge resistance in all my years the controversy associated with buses was like bar none. It was two opposite sides, it was brutal, right? To put that system in play. And the administration admittedly just barely put it out there. They put it out there with no bus stops and literally said like, well, you can just swag it down. I was livid. But you got staff that believes that that's okay. They're like, okay, well, I'm gonna see you later in the year. You, that probably is not gonna put, no, they know I'm serious. What are you doing? What do you mean? Flag down a bus. And that was acceptable. They're normalizing stuff like, who y'all talking to? 
All right, so we're going through a transition right now. So I, I, I'm the, the interim manager, um, hopefully interim director, Ron Roberts, you listening? Yes, sir. You listening? Yeah, we, we're hoping that you know, he's our interim guy. He's come over. He's got some great. Ron, tell them about your experience. Ron is here, but it, he got glanced over. Ron, please, just a little bit about your background and why you're in the room and, and, and leave it at that. Okay. Yes, uh, so uh, I've been planning and zoning for four and a half years. Previous to that, I used to uh, work at CCT and also uh, managed uh, the Georgia Commute Options Program. I've been on the Transit Advisory Board in Cobb County for five years now, uh, working for uh, Chairman uh, uh, Lisa Cupid on that, in that capacity. So I know a lot about transit, and uh, I'm very interested also in, in, with the seniors. That came up earlier in, in Commissioner Robinson's speech. That's near and dear to my heart because when I first started at, at Cobb, uh, I was hired under after they had done a senior adult transportation study, so I was hired as a mobility manager. I worked a lot with senior services and I worked a lot on uh, human service transportation to try to, to really take what we were doing in transit, but also to, to get transportation options to the seniors and the disabled in the community around Cobb. So I uh, really enjoy it, and so I find myself in the unique position to, uh, to uh, be an interim director and uh, take, uh, you know, hopefully take the, the program into uh, some new levels moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we're going to feed y'all, but we're going to keep talking while y'all are being there. But Tiffany and Ron, here's a question, though. You, you heard the comment. What's your position as it relates to people are not being stopped and picked up. They're blowing through. They're having consistent experience. There's no shelters. The signs are not easily read. We don't know what routes are actually associated with the signs. In other words, I've, got, I've gotten this feedback. I'm sure y'all might have gotten it in different ways, but I mean, is there... What's your commitment to like this? It's not going nowhere. So what are we going to do about this? Well, first of all, I want to introduce myself. I'm Tiffany Stewart Stanley. I am the assistant county administrator. So I just want to first of all commend you guys for being actively engaged in our community. I will say that the Golden Years Club has always been at the forefront of community engagement before the pandemic when I was the director of external affairs. I could always count on you guys to be heavily engaged, volunteer, so I want to commend you for that. I also want to commend Commissioner Robson. His commitment to community engagement has been, he's been at the forefront of that in this county. One of the things I would like for you to know that in August of 2021, Connect Douglas became part of the newly formed Intergovernmental and Community Services Division. We have uh, four departments in that division which are Connect Douglas Senior Services. We have Dr. Consuela Gilchrist, our Senior Services Director here with us today. Um, Library Services and Juvenile Programs. We also have three offices, which are the Office of Intergovernmental Affairs, External Affairs, and Grant Oversight Management. My commitment as the Director of that division is one goal, to provide exceptional constituent services. That is my main goal um, for that division. And one of the things that we are definitely doing is taking a deep, deep dive into Connect Douglas to work to make sure that we don't have citizens flagging down buses. Um, I will tell you this, I have worked diligently over the past couple of months to work in every aspect to work with the um, staff over at Connect Douglas to make sure that we have customer service is one of our number one goals. And I will tell you that we have been made an assessment and we're ready to move forward and we will definitely be working hard to make sure that you have the bus shelters that you need that you don't have to flag down buses and we'll be coming forth pretty soon with the constituent services initiative to make sure that you are aware of all of our services which we are doing a great job working with the collaborative firm but we want to make sure that you really know what our services are and that you're getting the customer service that you need and that's my commitment as the assistant county administrator and the director of that division um, you guys know Miss Mickey knows you guys can reach out to me at any time I will give you my cell phone number because I want to make sure that you have what you need from not only just from my division but everything in Douglas County um, we are committing to, to exceptional customer service so if you have any questions for me please reach out to me I'll make sure that you get my information before we leave here today uh, Ron, do you have anything else you want to add? No, that, no, no. Stay there. I want to. I want to talk about one of the key things, and to her point, and thank you, Tiffany. Could you guys it, use a mic, please. Oh, oh. louder. Sorry. I'm hearing issues. Oh, some of us. Some of us. Visual. Excuse me. Can you stand up? Yes. I can. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
right? You gave us some feedback. Uh, you didn't know how to do it. You were nervous, but yet, like, guys, it's okay. The bus system is solid. We're financially solvent. Put the county to the side. This was a federal grant, $6 million over three years. Right? We had to make our local match. And then the feds came along, obviously, because the pandemic inspired us basically another year. If that's not the issue. Contrary to public opinion about, oh, the bus is like, no, it's not going anywhere. You, it, it can't be taken. It's not like, no, people got to get back out there, the people who really need it. Now, we do know that we must make some adjustments, all right? So we know that the routes, you got to put it out there the first time. That's your baseline. Now, let's make some adjustments. Do we need to extend this route out this way? Do we need to swing it that way? But this is a, it's federally funded, so there is a process. I can't just jump out there and like, okay, change the route. This is federal money, you gotta follow federal rules, and you guys understand who work for the feds, how things have a, a process and order to it. But we are committed to making it right. Uh, but I, I, I do, it, it, you gotta sometimes put the narrative to the side, and say, look guys, we're trying to improve quality of life. We're trying to give people mobility options. Um, from the paratransit to the normal, we will look at some type of what they call it, dollar ride, if that works for certain areas of the county that not so far to the east, we recognize there needs to be some adjustments, but we're still committed to ensuring that your tax dollars are appropriately spread. I never fight against somebody who has a different narrative or, or position. It's like, okay, well, these people want mobility, those don't. I support mobility, this is where I'm going. I don't debate myself, right? That's important. You guys said this was important, and it was proven through a study that this was important. Your voices matter, and so you just want the option it has nothing, you know, you, you can't tie your dignity to how you gotta get around. I have no problem getting on, walking down Riverside, getting on the bus, or getting in the Uber. I mean, I'm secure, I gotta get where I gotta get to, and so that's important if you only have that as an option. So let's, let's just, if there are any questions you wanna ask as they feed, I mean, Wendy, how are y'all gonna handle the food? They're doing it now? All right, that's fine, keep going. So while we're standing here, and thank you again, we, we did the invocation, um, do you guys, um, who has a question for us? Anyway. My question is, I come from a city that had buses, and so I'm used to being able to go. Here, it seems like the bus stops are very far in distance. They don't come into the neighborhoods, and so that makes it really hard for a usership. And then the type of bus that they have that they're showing, they look like they're disabled buses for people, so people don't relate the actual bus to being part of the bus system. So. Okay. That's awesome. You want to respond? Thank you. What's your name? Wait, wait, wait. What's your name? <laughs> My name is Sylvia Ankara. I'm president of the GYC. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much, Madam President. All right. So that good question. I would take them in reverse. So think about the buses. So remind me, we got a 15 passenger bus, which is what we currently have. Looks like what the church bus. And then you get the 21 passenger, and then you get the 55 Marta. We made a conscious decision not to put 55 passenger buses out the gate. I can't get my son the big, the big truck yet. Like he, he can't handle it yet, right? Let's grow into our system. So duly noted, uh, again, a lot of us born, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, for the most part, from the world. I know what advanced systems look like, so you're born into something that's probably 60, 70 years old. But have you ever seen, we were the first county in the past 15 years to ever bring mobility, buses. So to, to, to um, Michael Hightower's point, like guys, no, we, nobody's even focused on this. This was important, but the question is our buses are small, so that sounds like a brand new issue. But again, to put 55 pack, we, uh, and I, I challenge my church, look, don't put no 55 passengers out there, you don't know what your ridership is going to be. Right, so if you got challenges and optics for ridership for a small bus, can you imagine having a 55 passenger bus? Right, so you gotta grow into certain things. So duly noted, but she brings up a good point, like our, our branding is not good enough, guys. They can't distinguish. So again, historically, you think urban, you think big buses, they're saying they're not making the connection. Make that point. Um, again, the other point was, what was the second one, first one, Tiffany? Um, the, the buses are far off. Oh, on the bus stops. 
um, Miguel or Ron, which one of you can answer the question, is there a federal law to say how far we can put bus stops? And is there something that prohibits us from going inside the subdivision, or is that a function of money? No, it's not. Come on up. Thank you, Miguel. Uh, good morning or afternoon, whatever it is by now. Uh, I'm Miguel Valentin, and, and I was uh, part of the initial push to uh, get the system going. And there, there was a lot of uh, back and forth in terms of, you know, what equipment, uh, where are the stuffs going to be, uh, what is the ridership going to be, and there was a lot of opposition initially. Uh, when the system was conceived initially, the goal was to get it approved, get it funded, and get it rolling. And initially, we thought, well, we know where the clusters of population are. We have a sense of perhaps where the ridership is going to be based on the surveys that have been done. And we started off with a limited number of stops. And I heard Commissioner Robinson earlier uh, mention about, you know, the buses, uh, the stops are too far apart. Or initially, we got going without uh, any stops at all, and, and you had to flag the bus down. Actually, we had a very limited number of stops at key locations. And then, because we knew that folks would want to get access to the system elsewhere along the route, we said, <coughs> you are still going to be able to, in addition to waiting at those limited stops, flag the bus down as it goes by because that will let us know where the ridership is. And then we'll make adjustments. But to, to the question at hand, there is no regulation as to where the bus stops are, need to be. A logical sense would tell you that they need to be where the people are that want to access the system. And as the system matures, we are definitely, well, the folks that are now going to be managing the system will know that there's additional locations that need to be added. And there are some locations that may need to be uh, abandoned because, well, the system, uh, there is no activity there. And so uh, the system will evolve in terms of the routes, the locations of the stops, <clears throat> and also the configuration of the stop. So uh, I was asked uh, the time, and I, I'm telling you how to build a clock, so I'll stop there. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Miguel. And I, I want to bring up, I mean, to that point, once again, we, we acknowledge it. Um, you, you, you had, um, let's just be honest. Part of Douglas County is also that you have, while we're listening to citizens, you also have um, insiders that had different views, who sometimes let their politics get in the way of their job. And that's a problem. Because it's like, well, the will of the board is to go this way. And so the execution is something that, like, I'm still disheartened by, how can you put a system out and not have bus stops? And I gotta do it, I have to go off. Like, I'm sure I got this. Are y'all out your mind? Like, it was, it was, it's insulting that you thought that was, we're just gonna throw it out there. Unacceptable. So, but I'm giving account to where we came from. That's new guards, new groups, new leadership. They're inheriting this problem, so please trust me. Um, they're, 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 all these guys here are, are, are new to the system, and so I'm letting them feel this. That as we go, we get better. Like, do better. Just do better than that. They, they expect more than this. They're not asking for much, but th there is a, a certain amount of dignity, right? And we're here to serve all the citizens, no matter what they, whether, you know, regardless, right? Just do our job. Because again, they said, you know, citizens, I mean, my, 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 my staff, oh, they're taken care of, they're paid well, oh, they always want, they want titles, they want this and that, nothing, but you're not taking care of my citizens. Really? Uh-huh. Y'all want me to vote for what next week? I got the power of 36,000 people. My vote is gonna matter. And we have to, have to remind them every now and then. Because sometimes staff dictates to like, this is good enough. And I hate the monopoly mindset of government. It treats citizens like, 
you here to, for my existence. Like, no, you have your job because of the citizens. Please don't ever forget that. You're here to serve. And so but my job is to be the check and balance. That's the executive branch. I'm legislative. I'm part-time. I show up every now and then. And uh, I have to make sure that everything is the way you guys would expect. So give me another question. Let's keep it going. Yeah. Ms. Janice. Ms. Janice, come on. Yes. Yes, ma'am. All right, David, David, good, where are you? Right here. David, get my report where it is. Get, get that report and speak, speak to, you know how to speak to uh, from the beginning of time. Yes, we do have that data. It should have been handed out, but it, it has been. Okay, David, walk everybody through that report then since they have it. Sure. Start with the ridership from beginning to now. Speak to the trade. All right, everyone. Um, if you look on that very first page, you'll see where it says um, June 19. So these are numbers from 2019. And again, uh, thank you for allowing me to come here and speak. And you know, I know most of the people in here, and hopefully most of you uh, know me. And uh, again, I'm David Good. I'm the director of communications for the SPLOS program. It's what you guys uh, voted for back in November of 2016. Um, and right now, it's going to we're in the very last year of it, so it'll end come April, uh, basically March 31st of 2023. And definitely let me know if I'm talking too fast. I've always been told I talk too fast and too low sometimes. So just stop me if I need to be stopped. So if you look at the total ridership, um, you'll see that 2025. So um, for that month, they basically looked at the number and said, well, let's see how many people ride it totally for all four areas. And then the average is 78. So therefore, in that month, when people think about it, that's not a lot. Hey, on your first time going out, that actually is a lot because people are saying, well, it's there. So let's get a chance to go out there, try it. It's kind of like uh, putting on a new pair of shoes. Back in the day when I got a new pair of shoes, if you started walking, you start stepping and falling. You didn't know that you needed to go out there and scrape the bottom of your shoe, get the rubbing, so you can actually work, uh, you know, walk perfectly. Same thing that we're basically doing with the bus system is that we had to get rid of it. So therefore, if you end up going down and you look at the uh, month of July, same thing. Everything is set up by around 10, 20, 30, and 40. And as Danielle pointed out, those are all these along these map systems. And I believe you guys actually even have that um, um, at your desk. If you continue um, looking out through the whole entire month, you'll see everything goes from June to December. So look at everything there, and you'll see what our ridership was in the month of in, in 2019. You go to the next page, that's 2020. Remember the first two and a half months was non-pandemic, but then from there all the way to December was pandemic. So know that things start to change. So if you look at the top, you'll see January. Look at the bottom to the right, you'll end, and bottom to the left, you'll see December. We started off with averaging 126. So remember the first month, it was 78. Come January when it's cold, guess what? You guys are out there riding it at you know, 126 people per uh, you know, average daily. So you keep on looking through that, and I believe the highest uh, one that I see on here is January, 3,398 people. On the very first month of the pandemic, um, I believe it was daily 78, the next month was daily 46. So it basically went in half, just from the pandemic. So just know that the reason why some things didn't happen is because the pandemic came in. The federal government, like Commissioner Robinson said, came in and added another year. So basically right now, I don't want to say we're riding on house money, but right now we have that grant, then we have the feds step in. So it's baby steps right now, and then as it's fully ours, then we'll know where can you go for this stuff? Where is the best space, our best place where we could put a shelter? You don't want to build a shelter and then have no ridership. You know, then that's because then you guys want to come up and talk to the commission and say, hey, why did you end up building this here if there was no ridership? Right now, in these first three years, going into the fourth year, we need to understand where is the ridership. If you guys say, hey, we, you know, we're over here, we're at the mall, we know the mall is the location, but there might be a space out there on Vulcan. He said, well, you know, we got a lot of, there's a bus stop right there, but no one stands there, because that's, that's where I'm at. Don't see many people there, but across the street, at the gas station, there are people there, and there's a sign there. So if that ends up being the spot as the road gets wide, guess what? and they're going to be in the shelter there. So these guys are listening to your comments, find out well, where do you think will get us higher average? And if you, if you tell them that in a certain location, they might say, hey, you know what, that's not, that's a little bit of waste from another spot. Let's go ahead and put one here and see what our average ridership comes up. You go to the next page, you'll see 2021, which basically is last year. 
Yeah, let me get to it. And I know you guys can actually uh, read it all with me, so don't think I'm just putting it out there like this. So from January in 2021, look at the ridership down to 55. That's because of the pandemic, you'll still see 38. So if you hear people saying this system isn't working, it's because, it's because of this pandemic. It's not because people aren't interested. It's not because we don't hear your voices about what's going on. We're hearing your voices. That's why we're here now. And so you're looking at this. You're going from January to December. And December, I can't see what the ridership was in December. But I believe it was 56. So going from January to December, 55 was in January. That next December was just 56. So know that these numbers will start picking up as Hopefully the pandemic will be coming to a close at some time in the future, but if not, if it's something that we gotta live with, then hopefully the ridership will end up uh, being learned from there. And Ron Roberts, who is a, is a good guy, I've known him for a few years, he actually is one of the guys that I know that listens. And I've just met Sharma, uh, she's also on the team that we're really trying to make sure anything that we're building within the system, there will be minority participation. There will be local participation. So just know that anything that we're building on, we're looking at the entrepreneurs that are in the area, as well as getting seniors input. Because Ms. Medina, she spoke to me, I believe, every single month about ridership, what's going on. Can you get this information to somebody? So that was my main reason to come here was Ms. Medina and Ingrid. You know, they pushed it, you know, everything. So if there are any questions that you guys actually have for me, I'll take them and then we'll go from there. Ms. Medina? Yeah, I have one uh, for uh, uh, Mr. Well, <coughs> you mentioned uh, about inactive uh, neighborhoods, places that are not active or in need, place cut stops. There's uh, no problems on the bus stops. Uh, so where do people, how do people know where the bus is going? Uh, no activity, so there's no problem. Okay, um, yeah, there, there is no activity for major uh, uh, stores like, say, like Walmart and Sam's Club, Arbor Station Mall. Nobody gets on or off the bus where there should be a, a lot of stuff going on. And, and if you don't know what the route is, how are you going to just jump on the bus? And they don't stop. The buses don't stop. I've heard uh, a, a couple of our stories uh, of uh, people, including myself and, and uh, one of my members, we did a focus group. We had to stand in the street. <laughs> he was going to go right next to me. He's not used to stopping. Yes, ma'am. No, no, yes, ma'am. So staff are, are y'all, one more time, look at our design. And, and again, you give them room for the first time. Think about parents. You give them the first time to clean the room, do something, build something. Uh, if you guys are came up through uh, instruction, educators and stuff, you, they took the first pass, they took the comprehensive test. You're getting feedback, right? And it's okay. But look at it, think about the system. They're right, there's no route numbers. We missed it. Yes, you got, wait, wait, we had to push to put the bus stops out there first. Then the bus stop signs were pink and green, blended back, they were cute. Now we change that, but like, you see how we're evolving, but guys, we need some thoughtfulness. New administration, there's new guys. We need to be thoughtful. When we go out for this, this uh, 2.0, get it right. Don't just reactively throw something out, because I'm thinking about these three evolutions. No bus stops, the cute bus stop, uh, you know, the, the bigger bus stop, but no, no routes, no shelters. But here's the thing, we have money. We're not broke. Right, so then, it, that's, so that's my issue, that where's the heart of the staff? And there was some internal, there was some resistance that they did just enough. And that's where I come in, like, okay, this is probably not gonna play out very well. Right, and this is my point to staff, like guys, there's no, there's, there's no debate. We didn't, you guys have to do the will of the board. When we, when we make decisions, we want this rolled out, we need to be rolled out. 
and then it has to evolve. So they need to hear this because I'm going to have to deal with them next week when we get back to revisiting and everything else. It's, it's about money. So my point is, well, oh, so you want all that, but they can't get a bus stop? They can't get no signs? You can't put pressure on staff or vendors to y'all do y'all job? See, I, I have to talk to them like that. <laughs> but, but, but they know I talk like that. So this ain't a front moment, but it's a reminder that says, guys, I care. And you guys should, should want to do right by them anyway. Um, and so we appreciate it. No, but she, she had to get out. No, say it. Yes, it's just like, gosh, no, we missed it. So when, when, what happens is that sometimes that begins to uh, um, normalize average. It's okay. No, it's not okay. I'm not going to, like, don't tell me, I ain't going to say this one more time. Put the number on the sign. Right, let's get those shelters out. Right, so that's my point. Now, I know we got multiple priorities, but now we've got somebody dedicated, Ron Roberts, you hear it. You got your charge, man. You're feeling it firsthand. That's why I invited you here to make sure you hear this firsthand. Like, look, man, this is the audience that made this happen, that, that has you perhaps positioned. Please make sure you serve them well and get to know them, etc. Give me another question, y'all. Come on, take Oh, yeah, I didn't kick in. Let's go. Oh, I love it. Come on. Tip. Yes, ma'am. First question is, what publicity has been placed out there for the people of the community to know that this is available to them? And I heard you say shelter, but as a senior, I need a bench. Where would I sit? All right, very good. Let's take it in reverse. Right, shelters, we didn't, we didn't go further with our definitions. If there's benches that are coming, and then there's shelters. Right, so you can have a bench and not have a shelter. All right, so, so but within the shelter, you're gonna have a bench, right? So, but to this point, to this point, staff, Ron, Miguel, we've had this conversation. We're not gonna have it again. You have money, come up with a design that's appropriate, but to David's point, you gotta make sure that wherever we put it, that's gonna be where density aggregates to be able to get on it. So there's two parts to it, but then you guys are professionals, so get somebody here to do design. Yes, ma'am, duly noted. Then you had a second question. Yeah, the publicity. Now, what, now, this is the good one. Now, this one more time. Listen to my vendors that are here, to Danielle and Michael, one more time. To, 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 yeah, we do a lot of good jobs. Of our, our publicity is Facebook. It's the internet. Yes, we do other things, don't get me wrong, but what I see is that you guys don't access it the way they're, they're, they're promoting it. And they get so enamored with the technology, you can find yourself here. Like, guys. One more time, if, if you concentrate only in downtown and only at the mall, if they can't get to the mall, if they can't get on the bus, who are you talking to? So beyond a drink mail piece, that obviously they know how to read, they, they, like, and they're used to mail, um, publicity has to get better. And so we, right now, we, they know they have a charge, and this year to show me an engagement plan that will get to those people who are, we, again, one more time, we focus on the normal 15,000 people to get our same old email, our same old newsletter, and everybody else is out there in the outer universe. And to hear this right now, I'm like, no guys, we haven't hit the mark. And you can't rationalize because you know one person. Everybody knows, everybody knows Ms. Medina. Everybody knows Ingrid. But there's people here that they ain't connected like that. Right, in other words, they matter too. Yes, they're important. But what about these people like this lady just said, like, but what's your publicity? Oh, we got three-year contract? This lady sitting here like, but what's your publicity? Oh, y'all come in my meeting every month, talking about how y'all great y'all are and how great this is, but she don't know. Ain't nobody got time to get on there and watch us for three, four hours to figure out what things are. One more time, we in our own little bubble. Thank you, ma'am. Really know that we will, we will fix that. They know the charge. We have to acknowledge your voice and say, yes, we didn't do a good job with the PR. We had to figure this out. We, they did a good job getting out there, but we're hearing guys, y'all gotta go to another level. Ron, Michael, just go to another level. In other words, like, okay, here's your baseline. You can still get an A, you're not quite there yet. It's, it's, not, it's not there yet. All right, let's keep going, another question. Yes, ma'am. What time does it actually start in the morning? All right, somebody come talk to Ross. Danielle, somebody tell them about time. They give them the time. How does it work? Anybody? Ron? 
The girls? Is anybody in here? Come on up, somebody. Who's this? Jessica, come on, Jessica, you got this. Explain the routes. Tell them who you are, and your area, and you can talk. Hi, so the routes, or, sorry, I'm Jessica, I'm the mobility coordinator for Let's Connect talk Douglas. Douglas. Yeah, talk all in that mic. I'm Jessica, I'm the mobility coordinator for Connect Douglas. Um, our routes right now, due to COVID-19, they're on a Saturday schedule, so the earliest that they start is 7 a.m. and then we go to 8 p.m. Only on Saturday? Well, no, so they're Monday through Saturday. All the buses run on the Saturday schedule. So can I just elaborate? Um, what was that question? I just want to make sure right here. The time. The time. The time. Come to the mic. You know, Jessica and I both have a, uh, hello, hello? Okay. So what I wanted to do is clarify what Jessica said is exactly correct. So what a Saturday schedule means, when you see the, the, the schedule, you'll have on one side Monday through Friday, and then the other side Saturday. It just means that on Saturday, the start time's a little later. For example, you know, you go to your favorite store, Monday through Friday, they might be one, one way, and on Saturday, especially restaurants, they might open from noon, you know, noon at six. Very similar. So the Saturday schedule had been in operation due to COVID-19 protocol because a lot of people weren't traveling and we had to social distance effectively. So it was operating on the Saturday schedule. It doesn't mean that it's not all the stops and all of that. It just means the time is different. So instead of looking at Monday through Friday, you look at Saturday. Okay, what's the work with? It's seven to eight is the operating schedule right now. So every day. We don't have Sunday. No, no ma'am. So 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through, or Monday through Friday. So what you see here, but it is important to say it's here. So those hours, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. And if you have a question, please call. A live person can answer your question directly. And Miss Francis back there right behind you, she's amazing, she is patient, she is kind, and she is knowledgeable. So, so let me get this straight. The Saturday schedule is from Monday to Friday? No, let me be clear, the hours. The hours are 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. And what are the days? Monday through Saturday. The bus operates Monday through Saturday, currently not on Sunday, Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Okay. Will and that if, change maybe? I was just thinking because my son, I had to find him to take him to work. <laughs> he started at six, you know, so I was wondering, the schedule is just gonna be from seven right now. I, I don't wanna be confusing, and I'll tell you offline, but normally the hours are, are, are six to eight, but just right now because of COVID, okay. 7 a.m. Okay. So hold up the light, he can get his own way to source. <laughs> no, these are good questions, but all right, let's go back to how many of you would actually, again, if you wanted to, because it was important to have a Sunday route. Sunday schedule. Yeah? All right, so we recognize that we, we want to evolve. We, we recognize that at some point, how far can my son drive? Can he drive from here to Savannah? Do I just allow him to go to the mall? It, it's, it's the weight of the system. Um, and again, there is a cost component to this, right? In other words, we want to make sure that people actually take advantage of this. But what I'm hearing again, one more time, they don't even know. We're going to have to make some, some adjustments accordingly. So give me another question. Okay, um, and, okay so, so this one had another question, but we have some questions over all right, let me go back and forth. That's okay. Go ahead. Yes. Is this the color scheme for this connect? Yes. That's it. Then my suggestion or recommendation is when you do the signage, yes, use this. Right. Then people will be easy. It will be easy for people to visualize it and see the sign and recognize it as a way to write with the signage. Y'all paying attention? Feedback. Acknowledge it though. I want it to be acknowledged that she said, no, duly noted. We're not reaching them, guys. All right, over here. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Good morning. My name 
name is Janet Payne. Yes, I just have to go back now. Yes. Um, this is a real life scenario. Yes, we are trying to help a senior. I'm an advocate for seniors. Been in the community for over 40 years. Real life scenario. Can you someone walk us through the process of a person? This is a senior that is trying to maintain their highest level of independence as possible. Yeah, so they want transportation, but they can't stand at a bus stop. They just can't do it. I mean, they don't. They aren't disabled. They just aren't able to stand at a bus stop. So I have tried to uh, work with assist this senior, and they said that they had to have an ADA uh, ADA application in, and that got cumbersome. So it's kind of like where we stopped with that. Because so can someone walk us through the scenario of that type of individual? Somebody from transit. This is a good point. This is key. Back to the call center. I'm not quite confident our call center does what it's supposed to do. I call it myself just to do that, be that guy, like to press buttons and find my way around, and it does go into loops and dead loops. It's not very friendly. Ron, that's the other thing with our vendor. We pay them, what, two million a year? I, I want that call center to do better than that. I mean, that, that, that come on, queuing now. We've got to do better than that to the point. I need my need met now. Don't put me on hold, don't leave me locked. I mean, especially these, I mean, disabled now, I know what it means. I'm blind. I walk across Riverside trying to listen to sounds. The commission does not need to be out there doing it, but I got to get where I got to go. So talk to them about, you know, the paratransit. Somebody come up here, please. My, one of my, one, those who really understands it and answer her question by what is the process in which to get that application approved? Oh, you got it? You got it. Kill it. All right, so our paratransit program, it's intended for anyone who has a disability or due to age, illness, or other mobility challenges is not able to access the fixed route. So that may mean like walking on the sidewalks. Um, that might mean standing at the bus shelter if your health doesn't allow for you to stand in the bus shelter at certain temperatures. If you're a senior and you can't stand at a shelter, so then you would be a candidate for what we call our ADA paratransit service. That service is the door-to-door -door trips. Um, so you were right, you have to fill out the application, which we have on our website. Also, if you call our um, main number, we can mail you the application or you can pick it up at the Transportation Center. And you fill that application out, return it to us, and then within 21 business days, you'll receive a decision whether you're approved, conditionally approved, which means you're approved for certain trips, like maybe to the doctor's office, or you know, on certain days when the weather is you know, not or when the weather is bad, um, or you're denied. And so once you're approved, then you can call the call center through our main number. Um, you'll press option one, and you'll schedule your paratransit door-to-door -door trips. Does it require a doctor's? Yes, sure. Uh huh. So it doesn't have to be just a doctor. So it can be a doctor, a nurse, a social worker, um, physical therapist, speech therapist, anyone who um, is a care provider for, for you and is aware of your condition. Um, so they have to fill out like a two-page part that talks about your mobility. We talked about cumbersome, and I, I listen, like you said, that's most important. And I'm Sharma, I'm the program coordinator. I've also dealt in operations for the past 17 years, now working aboard with uh, Douglas County Transit. But you talk about cumbersome, and what I want to say about the paratransit program, we're also available um, in the office to also assist those individuals because there are a lot of individuals who are not, don't have access to technology. And we want to help you, and I understand, not one do I have an elderly mother who's over 80, but I also have a son who has special needs. So I'm here today because I want to hear your concerns because if, sometimes if you don't tell us, we don't know. I'm privy to a lot of that information because I have uh, elderly parent and also a special needs son. But if you need to come into the office, we are there to assist you. I understand about making phone calls and pressing options. That gets cumbersome and it also gets confusing. So we are here to help. Please come by the office. Again, we'll be glad to give the address because we want to sit, assist you and we want those programs available to you. Yes? What's that phone number? Uh, 770. 920-7665. Sorry. 
To that point, so I've got a couple more questions before time check. We also want to get into uh, um, affordable housing for seniors. So we're going to, like you start on time, we're going to end on time. So we, we're going to keep this moving and stuff. So I'll take a couple more questions. Dr. Quinsella, I'm going to need you to come up here. Ron needs to come up here for you to hear um, this conversation regarding affordable housing. But give me a couple more that we haven't covered regarding um, the um, transit. So I, I guess right now, Ms. Mignon. Ms. Mignon, please. Hi, good afternoon. Hello. My name is Mignon Willis, and I'm actually a candidate for House District 64 uh, State Representative. And, and looking back at the ridership from 2019, the inception of the program, I see that the highest number, around 3,500, and then of course the pandemic occurred. What is your optimal number of ridership per month? where you would feel we have some stuff. Miguel or Ron? Well, and, and again, I'll speak to this. We didn't know until, again, you haven't even saturated yet. I mean, that 3,500 is like, no, it's sort of like, show me your receipts. Let's see what happens. We got to study. But the point is, okay, we knew that there was demand here. So like 3,500, we're rocking. And it collapsed. Because people really were using, so I don't want to, please don't get it wrong, it was on point, and then we all retrenched. You guys know what happened when we went through that pandemic. So now we got to we got to come back out. You guys still got some masks, not masks, still, still. We, we don't know what the number's going to be, but well, if I had to say, we, we're only in that immediate area. Let me make a point. We're only in that immediate area, and you haven't even reached the outer edges. So for, I, I don't want them to commit to something that they can't, they, they, they can't fulfill because you haven't, there are people even in this room haven't even written it yet. And I want to make sure we do that. So as it relates to a break-even proposition, we can do the math, but Ron, address your question. Sure. I think, uh, you know, we're right now, as Commissioner uh, uh, Robinson said, we are actually at the, the point now where we're assessing the whole program. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good, it's a good, it's a good point to be at, you know. I mean, we've been on, I've been uh, down there helping in uh, since February, um, but we've been looking at the program and how it's gonna be, what we could do and what we could not do and things like that. And I think there's just a lot of things that we wanted to do. We wanted to be here today to listen because I needed to hear, we needed to hear, Sharma needed to hear, Jessica needed to hear, Ms. Francis needed to hear everybody's concerns because we want to make the, this program better. And going forward, there, are, there is, there's some funding, you know, for for us to do some more planning around around a transit and, and and you know potential to 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 make that better. And and I think that's that's so there's not a, a set number for for that. And uh, but uh, I think what we'd like to get to is uh, where there's a community awareness of of Douglas uh, Connect, where there's ownership of the program. I mean, you know, it's like a sense of pride. I think that's the successful transit systems that I've seen around the country all have community ownership. They're like, oh, I'm gonna ride the, you know, I'm gonna ride the bus today. And it's, and it's, it's that kind of sense that we, we wanna get to. So I don't have a number for you, but I think that's, this has been very beneficial for us to hear what, what you guys wanna see. Sure. So one of the things that he just said, and I just want to make sure you're aware of, we are making a deep assessment, and that's one of the reasons why we're thankful for Commissioner Robinson today, bringing you all together so we can hear what your concerns are. Um, and one of the main things, the first thing we had to do was, and I don't mean to use a pun, but get the right people on the bus. So we are getting the right people on the bus so we can make sure we get you guys on the buses because that's the most important thing. So the assessment that we have been doing has been deep. We have been meeting weekly as a group going through everything that you've mentioned we've started to consider. We have recommendations that will be coming forward to the Transportation Committee next week. A lot of things that you guys have said here today. So we are here to listen, but we do want you guys to know that we are assessing every aspect of Connect Douglas in order to try to work hard to get to your concerns and provide that exceptional customer service. So we're just asking for your little grace, but I promise you we are working very hard to address all your concerns. Okay, hold on. David wants to say 
Okay. Let me, let me, I keep this moving. Let me, let me, uh, this is important because I, I, something within that question was something that in my spirit is like, okay, so if you don't make it, are you going to shut it off? Right? And so it was a question of, like, well, if it's not reaching a certain number, what y'all going to do? No no, 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 no. I'm not saying you. It triggered in me. Please don't do that. All right. It, no, it, it triggers something because this is also a sentiment that some of you have spoken to me. You've had some concerns. Again, you got, you, you've got an ideological shift in this county. One from incarceration when I came on board, 150 million for a jail, to, to something like the six million that to give people liberation. Right? So you got a jail that has what? Three bedroom minimum. We will never build that thing up and then we'll class before we ever do it. So you want to talk about trade-off and cost and money. So I said, I overbuilt that jail collectively. I came in, I inherited 40 million. I could have ran this transit system for what? 12 years. All right, so I, I want to give assurances to my seniors that no, we will give it a chance. And let's get, let's get information. I'm big on data. Right now, I don't know what the numbers are. I can forecast quite well with my eyes closed. I'm that good at math. But right now, my data is off because the pandemic, like, it knocked it. Right, so I got three months, and then I got pandemic related. Right, so it's so like, ah, okay, so I can blend through this. But I want to make sure that we got data. My, my, my youngest, uh, this is important, that, okay, they're being born, and okay, all of a sudden, the, 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 the middle of the cord was wrapped around that. Oh, so he had to sit in the French fly flyer for a minute. Right, okay, so the same thing here. Okay, so do I look at my son and say, well, what am I, I'm gonna go cut this off because he got to stay in the French fry, we got to see because similar to a pandemic, something happened. And this is important to say, like, guys, I know there's a narrative out there. If this is that, okay, really, guys? Really? We're gonna do right by the citizens. We're gonna give things a chance. Something that hasn't been here about, about liberation giving people options. They want, there is a narrative that wants to cut people off. Don't give them information. Don't give them access. Don't give them resources. That's just not me. And unfortunately, I'm just one vote. But please don't, don't misconstrue. This is, I have to give my position, because this was my meeting, to, to assure you, as chair of finance, of economic development and transportation, this ain't going nowhere. But we're going to give it a chance and we're going to make the adjustments. But duly noted, um, Ms. Willis, thank you so much for being here, a candidate. I got it. Um, I got to keep moving. I got to get into the senior housing because this is important. District 2. All right, the East, all right so District 2 is on the eastern side. So think Thorn Road, think Veterans, think Fairburn Road, think Riverside. Anybody? I got a couple. Oh, this is good. Okay, no, no, this is good. So that means that everybody else can appreciate what I'm about to say. All right, so then you know that, uh, all right, so throughout this county, you have different um, areas of uh, what we call character areas. District 2 looks more like Cobb and Fulton. I'm dense. Truck traffic. High density. People to the north, to the railroad tracks in the north, it's like you know, the city of Douglasville. It's quaint. It's the, the inner city, etc. People in District 3 along the southern border, that's our water supply. Right, it's, it's, it's conservative, it's a higher end, better quality, more, more land. And then obviously District 4, rural. Everything out for Carroll. So now we've got, what, what do we have? We just looked at, we, got, we have 900 subdivisions in Douglas County. 900. Right? All right, so, so each side, we're about 200, 250 east if we have to, for equal math. And so what has happened is that through this population these 30 years, the population is aging. Your baby boomers, you guys are uh, like my mother. You, 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 you no longer are, I don't want to maintain a house. It doesn't matter whether I can or I won't. I'm not willing or able. It doesn't matter. I now need to downgrade. I need to live somewhere just as comfortable where I left at a different price point. But, you know, you guys get it. Now, I'm, I'm talking to my, my mother's peers. You, I get it. You can manage it, but you need it to match. But it need, it's a quality. And when we talk about affordable housing, people get sort of this, this whole, they're going to bring crime, or they're going to bring their friends that just go visit the, the seniors and stuff. Like, let me get right at this. That's insulting. There is a narrative right now that we get into planning is only about bringing a 64-unit 
um, uh, um, senior, uh, which is age restricted. Not independent, not necessarily, it's age restricted, not independent, not assistant, and it's, it's this narrative. When we get these little emails, and I just like, really? Well, thank you for your opinion. Thank you for your position. Right, now, seniors, not apartments, senior housing, just 64 units. Now, that didn't want my district. Now, if it was my district, it was like, okay, keep moving. Because you gotta take care of the seniors. You need, you need a place to stay, somewhere nice. Um, and again, we're not talking about now, the senior housing that they got coming online right now, 3,000 a month private pay. Really, guys? Right? You, you cannot know. You're going backwards. Now I get the developers, they're catering to the people who pay. I get that, that's their money, that's their property, do what they want to. My job is to create an, a, an atmosphere that will promote um, housing, or yeah, housing for you guys. That, 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 that is appropriate for that. And so you need options. That's all we're saying, we're gonna create options. But as far as this notion that, okay, it's just gonna be some cheap housing, we're just gonna put a bunch of scenes in, like, we're gonna warehouse them, that is the most insulting thing because things have evolved from that. But like, don't bring that Atlanta over here. It's always this notion, don't bring that, like, guys, let that go. There is an element that still exists in this county about this, this notion of Atlanta. And it's a sub-message, and I have a problem with that. But what that says, I wanna talk about housing, so, Dr. Quinn Saylor, Dr. Gilchrist, come on up. I want you to speak a little bit about seniors and what you've seen by way of housing. Ron is also, uh, he's a, our director of, of, of planning and zoning as well, or manager, but also he's going to give some insight about what's coming in the future. Uh, so one, where are we at right now about what you provide for way of support? Give you a little commercial, please, Dr. And then, uh, Ron, come behind and talk about what's in the future. Yeah, Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I am Dr. Consuela Gilchrist, Director of Senior Services. It has been a pleasure to um, serve our older adults in Douglas County. And um, one of the things that we are most proud of, as you guys know, in August, we opened one of our, um, our newest senior center. And we're seeing that the numbers are growing. We have several um, offerings per day of activities at that senior center, but what we try to do at all of our senior centers and for our seniors all over the county is education and to educate you guys. So um, when you have an opportunity, please stop by the New Lithia Springs Senior Center. We had Ms. Payne, she was there yesterday um, talking about all things Medicaid and Medicare, talking about all things Medicare. And so we um, would love to hear your concerns, what your needs are. So if at any point you have um, an idea, a suggestion, questions, please do not hesitate to contact me. My door is always open. You can contact the, um, the senior centers on Fabron Road, Woody Fight, or Lincoln Springs. So I did want to put that out there. But we do know that the population in Douglas County, I believe right now we have about 16,000 on average, that was our last census, about 16,000 older adults, what they consider older adults, 60, 65 and older in Douglas County. And we know that our um, older adults, because of modern medicine, that we're living longer, that the life expectancy has definitely increased. And especially in Douglas County, because we know that Douglas County is a great place to live, work and play. And so um, what we're seeing is that there's no affordable housing in Douglas County. Um, and when we say affordable housing, we mean 30% of your income. That's pretty much what's considered affordable housing. And so I've had several conversations with Ron Roberts about affordable housing and looking at and talking to um, developers and the Board of Commissioners about what can we do. Because we do know that that is a concern and we do get many questions. We have seniors that stop in the senior center all the time wanting to know about housing. Right now, we know that that is a really tough subject. And we also know that there is it's a major need and we must do something about it. And so we would love to just thank Commissioner um, Robinson for this opportunity and this forum so we can hear your needs and your concerns and we do take your, your voice, your concerns, we do take them seriously. So we are here to hear what you want, what you need, and to see what can we do to advocate for you. 
Um, we do work closely with the Atlanta Regional Commission. We get a lot of our funding from ARC. And so these are some things that I can take back to the Atlanta Regional Commission to let them know what the needs are for older adults in Douglas County. So uh, again, feel free to reach out to me. I'll be here at the end of the meeting. I'll provide you with my contact information if you have any questions. Yeah, I wanted to ask most of the senior um, facilities are on the east side of the county and there is no, no kind of senior facility on the west side of the western um, sort of like border. Is there a plan to, to make that happen? Okay. I'll defer that to you. Yeah, I'm going to address that, but I want Ron. Why don't you speak to what senior housing is coming? Um, that you see, he runs planning and zoning, and so he'll give you some insight as what's on the books right now regarding affordable housing. But I hear you, Mr. Do. I'll come back to you. I got you. Uh, thank, thank you, Commissioner. You. So yes, um, what an opportunity, right? So planning and zoning for four and a half years now, uh, helping out with Connect Douglas. So we had put some things on the on the on the on the boards as. Uh, in our codes and things like that to, to help out with transit. So, but we've also seen senior housing come forward. The one that uh, Commissioner Robinson just mentioned. We had the community meeting for that last night. Um, there were a lot of citizens that showed up that didn't understand it. They were there and, and, and that's one thing we've done in, in, in planning and zoning is give those community meetings like that. But if the, the, the board of commissioners aren't there, the planning and zoning members aren't there. It's just the developers coming to meet with the citizens and get the an questions answered hopefully Cut down some of the time in our planning and zoning meetings today, but um, but uh, so they they have very prescriptive um, uh, ratio where they uh, are getting uh, uh, credits and things like that to to build this, this this type housing. We had one that came in off Stewart Mill, West Stewart Mill, uh, about a year ago, and uh, for whatever reason that didn't didn't come to fruition. But we do know that the need is there because during uh, 2017 the, we had a, the, the county did a, a bleakly group did a report on housing and it identified the deficiencies not just for apartments but also for um, for senior housing and so one of the things we've done with our code is we know that some of the the, the denser uh, locations would probably for seniors would probably be around say a uh, Douglasville or Villarica so within 2500 2500 feet of those uh, um, of those areas around Douglasville and things like that, we have what's called PRD, and that's what this this one zoning is coming through uh, in May. Uh, so it's a it's a plan uh, residential district requires hook, uh, hook up to sewage, and we allow certain um, uh, higher densities for that for that kind of component and things like that. So we're hopeful that this is going to be. It was a, a successful meeting. I mean, not everybody went home last night, but at least we got, they got a lot of questions answered and that developer's actually coming back through on their own accord to do, uh, I think it's, uh, if anybody's interested, it can be April 14th at uh, 6 p.m. at uh, Arbor Mall. So uh, I can get that information to you, but that's what we have on the boards and we're, and we're seeing more like the, uh, uh, developments like that. And we, we do, planning and zoning staff works very, very diligently to help those developers with their designs and locations, so. No, so, so he brings up a good point, I know we've got to close here, but, but to that point, uh, again, uh, it, it simply becomes okay, but you guys are aging. It is, y'all got a big, I'm Generation X. Y'all got a big, big, the boomers. It's like, okay, you're, you're, you're aging through, so you're like, okay, where's my, my, my landing pad? And we, we're, we're, we don't have the supply right now, right? So they're, they're looking, we've got a crazy thing. So the question is, my job is just to appropriate. To answer her question, you know, well, where is this at? Well, you have to create it. You have to create an atmosphere. So, uh, you know, when I when you guys sit in the office, I'm the one that sat there and says, okay, I I, I surveyed and looked like, okay, everybody tired of, tired of playing baseball and football and soccer? You ain't got them in one gym here. So I raised my hand. Of course, you got the community center in down the street. Same thing out, out of a town hall. Same thing with Ms. Barbara Smith, who came to a town hall and says, you don't have any senior um, facility. And I'm like, okay, I'll be right back. This happens to be across from District 1, but doesn't matter. I'm getting to your point. It's about advocacy. It's advocacy. You can make it happen. Now, what Ms. Barbara actually asked for, I mean, she was standing with Tom, it was at Silver Creek, um, Silver Creek um, HOA. And what, what Tom Worthen was the chairman at that time. 
and I, I, he was there as my guest. You know, I'm, I'm very, you know, hey, bipartisan. Come on here, Tom. And so it's like the question was, she asked for a senior housing complex with a community center. That's what she asked for. And, and we, we, we weren't there yet. We, we, could, we, we just weren't there. So we're like, well, this is what we can do. But it, 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 uh, it removed the need. All right, so now we're back to housing. So what are y'all really asking? Are y'all asking for the government to subsidize and create a housing complex? You have that over there right now off of, a court, uh, uh, what do you want to call it, a hospital drop. You have certain things that, we have a housing authority, but I don't like that housing authority. I, I, don't, I don't, I mean, I'm like, okay, guys, y'all got to raise that standard. Y'all got to manage better. You got to deliver better services. I, I, it, it was attitudinal that I had a problem with. But what are you really asking us for? Like, we can't make the developer buy something. We can create an atmosphere like we bring commercial developers. We can bring residential. Let they get to make what they want, but do you want me to give them incentives like we give these commercial guys? Would you like me to give them? And so there you go, you get into an ideological, like, you know what you're asking, right? I like stuff like this. You want us to subsidize it? Uh-huh. All right, so now I gotta get a three. Now I gotta get you, like, I hear you. Now why is it on the west side? Hey, you got other district commissioners waiting for that side of town. They said, I don't want nothing, I don't need nothing. Like, oh, okay, we keep moving. Right, so I, I can't get into an ideological because it, this is democracy. There's no dictators, right? So in other words, I just wait for my vote and what happens out here is what happens if I get two other people to agree with that. But I don't wanna say that it was a neglect for the west side. You need somebody to advocate over there. So hopefully y'all will fix that soon. That you need to advocate for the care over there and stuff because it's needed. It's on the docket. There is on the docket. It's on the list at the bottom. Ain't that right there before senior community, senior center out west? It's there, but you know you got to agree to fund it. But but again, but I want to in these closing comments, like the senior housing is important. And so fundamentally, I want to take a poll. I can't see y'all. Y'all ain't got to tell me what the results are. Are, would you want us to a uh, master plan senior committee? Would you like the one right there off of Skyview, right across from the Sheriff's Satellite Office that has multiple apartments, houses, uh, uh, enclave for uh, grandparents to for kids and visit? Talk to me. Should we help subsidize that either directly or through some type of tax incentive? Raise your hand. Yes or no? Yes. No. I'm asking. Would you want it? Would you want the government to get involved in supporting it? You can talk to me. Yes. It's got to be reasonable, right? And it has to make economic sense. Don't worry. But but is that really what's going to take to, to make your quality of life comparable to where you are today? If you had to make that shift, I mean, because I want to hear the need. Like, okay, I hear you. Talk to me like my aunt used to talk to me. My mom, uh, uh, Aunt Mary, like just talk to me. Like, no, you need this now. And so I, I we need to hear this to say, okay. So are we saying that you're gonna need some help, that it's becoming more expensive and that your quality of life is dwindling based on your purchasing power and where you may land, I don't even know. I mean, it's becoming, Douglas County is becoming less affordable. Well, we'll have to move further out. So, I mean, gee, I mean, we used to be the cheapest, now we ain't an affordable no more. Okay, that's, yes, yes ma'am. Yeah, please, please, go ahead, Tiffany, come on. Landis Davis. I am from the Commission District 4, the West Side. And I have to tell you that before I moved here, I actually worked in the grants department of the county that I lived in, in California, for affordable housing. Now, the problem is, nobody wants to be put into, um, into like a, 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 people that live out, especially out on the West Side, where you live more open, you have more, I live on a half an acre. Um, you, you don't want to be put into a high density um, situation. And um, so we have, you have the problem of the, what we call, what we call in California, the WUI, the wildland urban interface. And that's what you're dealing with out in the west side is the rural urban interface. So a lot of people that live out there, they, they're ready to move out of their homes out of the subdivision, but they don't want to live an apartment building. So the the, the um, some of the things that we've 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 taken tours on and looked at and, and trying to do study groups on, uh, like the 
the, the, the tiny houses. David was with us. We, we, we toured a beautiful tiny house um, uh, village in Cobb. Right, okay. um, now, so I mean, the, you could put these on small acreage, depending on what you think, Ra, you know, the, the zoning um, situation. Uh, where's our zoning person board? Uh, he's here. Frank. Frank. You know, some of these tiny houses are going to have to be uh, the, the tiny house village. They're beautiful. They're one story. They're, they're small enough that, a, a, you know, an elderly person can take care of without spending all their time trying to clean. Um, these are beautiful houses. And you, you can, you, if you're handicapped, you can get in and out. So we need to look at some of the new concepts on affordable housing. And we need to figure out if, if we can get, the, if the zoning can change. So I don't, I don't think we're looking at big complexes or Sun City and all that. We can't afford the Sun City costs $4,000 just to get into it. So, you know, so there's some other, other areas. And when I, was, when I was doing it in Northern California 15 years ago, I've been here 15 years, 15 years ago, I'm telling you, we built beautiful tiny houses for people. And because they didn't want to live in town. I, I had a 94-year-old guy, still in good shape, couldn't hear good, but he was still in good shape. He could still walk, he could still take care of himself. But he lived in a house, you know, had stairs. He couldn't manage the stairs. So we came in and built him a tiny, designed tiny house. He lives in it, He's, that man's still alive living in that house. So, you know, these are the things we need to, we need to look at some creative some creative approaches to, to affordable housing. Because seniors don't want to be piled up in a, especially seniors that are used to living in, in, in a subdivision situation. Thank you. That's, that's my comment. We ready, we ready to talk about, we ready to talk about doing some planning, aren't we? Yeah. All right, no, she brings up a good point. No, no, give her. Now, now think about the creativity. Right, so here's the thing, it's like the mobility for those who need paratransit or, or who needs flex or down ride. You need housing options like you need mobility options. One size does not fit all, right? So, so no, be open to, like that may, that may be for one person, but that may not be for the next person. The point is you have options, and I, I love the idea of, of creativity. Uh, but again, the people on the east are different than the people on the west. My point is always, well, we can coexist. Anything can coexist, right? So I, I, I don't want to make it ever a zero-sum game. For those who are trying to get into politics and stuff like know this, the universe bends. There is a compromise on everything. At some point, you get seized in life and you see stuff like, oh, I hear you. This is going to be fun. Because again, at the end of the day, it is going to be funding. And right now, while we came to do that, but like, okay, but now it becomes like, okay, but what will we do? And it's going to be the will of the board. So I got 15 minutes left. So um, to, to obviously the leadership that's here that invited us, I want to make sure I adequately uh, address questions. I've got 15 minutes. So to the leadership, how do y'all want to finish this? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes. Yes, ma'am. I think that the income would determine the amount that you pay. And did I hear 30 percent of the income as being typical? Yes, 30 percent of the threshold. Is it your gross or where's? Is it your gross or your net or is your gross? It's your gross. I need you. Is it? I need the definitive answer. Now, where's my staff to say it? Is it gross? Thank you. It is gross, ma'am. All right, it's gross. Say it one more time, sir. Assets. It's income versus assets. It's your income. Yeah. yeah. All right. She's got a question for a minute. All right. So, my question is, when 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 we become seniors, yes, uh, society has some kind of thinking 
that because we're seniors, we need less of everything. If you go to the, if you go to eat and you get a senior meal, they give you a little bit of food. Now we're talking about we want a house, and you're talking about put us in a little house. When we are used to having the rooms, I'm active. I don't want to be in a little house. I want to be in a bedroom, living room, dining room, kitchen, or kitchenette. But I want to be like a house. I don't want to be nothing, nothing little. And then when you talk about my salary, and you take whatever percentage it is, they still say I'm over the income level, but I'm still struggling to survive. Now, what do you do for people like me? Mm -hmm. She is the one that I have to listen, listen to the sentiments. And what you're learning is that no, you got some that don't want to be subsidized, some want this, some want your know, tiny home. Right, there's different mixes in here. Right, so, so there's no one size fits all, but, but now you gotta figure out where's the majority of the people at. This is how when you learn how to be elected, with, especially not being a you gotta know how to listen. You have to listen. Like, okay, now I've gotta discern this room. Now where do most people fall? You have strong voice and stuff, but that, that, that doesn't represent all. When I hear this heart right here, like, yeah, there we go. Got it. Right. Right, it's like, okay, now that I've got to create, like, right. You, you, you're being marginalized by society and everybody who all comfortable and stuff. They talk about, like, no, this, this, okay, now, nah, touchdown. This is the seniors. That, that, it's, it's sort of that, that median, that, that, you know, those who know about data. Like, no, this is, this is the average right here. There's outliers. Their needs need to be wet as well. But it does not reflect the whole. But what you just said was, like, that's the majority of the seniors. How do I maintain your quality of life, the dignity? And that's what happens, you have people who are in power who try to marginalize and, and, and determine and dictate what your situation is. I have a problem with that, which is why I'm in the office, you guys have put me here, so. All right, let me tell you this, so I, as I leave the office and leave today, my question becomes, I, I mean, I take stuff up, I mean, even with Night Gum, I go get this. Like, before I leave in two years and six months and one week, I can commit to like, okay, we want some senior housing that has a mixes that considers different income and different interests. Something that gives you options just like what mobility, just like what, or, or transit, however you want to call it. We, we can do this if this is, because again, you guys matter. You're in a very, and you vote. And so the point is, you actually vote. You have the greatest power. That's like, it's like, guys, but then you, but you're so calm and sensitive. Like you said, we just, but, but do you matter? Point, do I see you? Yes, ma'am. I hear you loud and clear. And that's that's why I've done what I've done. Like, no, I gotta listen to the voice. The person says, but do you hear me? I shouldn't have to jump up and down or do this to like threaten you and stuff. Do you see me? And yet you're you know, I you said about shovel or you know, ready. No, it's about shovel. You're, you're worthy. And you're worthy of my attention. Just like with the senior um, center and the kids and those the mental health and stuff that's been brought here. Like, oh, housing is next. Like, oh, I can finish on housing. I can finish on housing that create, and all I can do is create the atmosphere. Yes, it may require some type of subsidy. We give it to commercial all day long. Oh, we gonna get convenient? You don't oh, switch $2.5 billion and stuff, they got 60 jobs, and what'd you get out of this? But yet, I got my seniors who said, look, I just want a little help, but you know, get a developer. Oh, you got a developer right now, that master plan on Lee Road, trying to take 30%. I was like, y'all are out your mind. Right, so, so Pinty, now I, I follow money. And I'm very good at it. And so when I hear you, like, y'all, don't get self righteous in, 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 in taking your position. Like, guys, I'm going to make sure you get your dollar work, your $10 work, or your $100 work. It doesn't matter what your income, don't let that dictate the, the quality of life of the rest of your peers. That I cannot support. I, I cannot cash toward that. Now you take your position, but right now, I just heard that we need to focus on that, give consideration, I heard it loud and clear. I said, I, I've given my, I don't make promises, I just say, I'll be right back, because I actually do deliver. And so, um, ladies and gentlemen, this has been so good and kind. I've got, we, we gotta wrap this up. I gotta go and leave on time. I think, come on, yes, please. We got two more? Three questions, come on. All right, go ahead. Oh, I have a question, Oh, okay. There's one component of that. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I thought you 
Okay. Oh, we got to call again. Yeah. One o'clock, so this is it. One closing comment. Yes. This is something that's really near and dear to my heart because I have been an advocate for seniors for many years, and for the past 12 years, I have worked for a company called A Place for Mom. Mm -hmm. And A Place for Mom is where seniors call to find out about senior apartments, senior independent retirement communities, assisted living, and nursing homes. And yes, I, okay. And yes, I know that it's a need in this area because the calls that I've gotten, many seniors live just on social security. And so it is important to have senior housing that's affordable, that's nice, that's not cramped up, but because a part of it is socialization as well. So it's not just about being in a separate house with a nice 1,500,000 square foot home or apartment that provides what you're looking for anyway. But thank you. This is one thing I have not heard. It's the communication piece. Because I was involved with an initiative with senior housing. And the message got confused because people thought affordable housing and subsidized housing were the same. Mm -hmm. So in that communication piece, there was a big movement that said they didn't understand affordable right. housing. They interpreted it as subsidized right. public right. housing. Right. And it was, I know it's not the same, right. but I'm, my point is communicate it properly yeah. and be included in the communication piece. Yes, ma'am. Well, no, and, that, and that is very important. Well, I just want to thank all right. of you all for being here today and providing us information. And I, I want you to know this has been extremely helpful. I know that Commissioner Robson, Vice Chairman Robson, our Board of Commissioners are committed on the county administration side. We are committed to addressing your concerns and being here for you. Um, like I said, we will give you the information. I really want to thank Commissioner Robinson for once again being at the forefront of community engagement and really making sure that your voices are heard. That's very important because I, I talk to a lot of my counterparts in other communities and that does not happen. So I'm saying that, honestly, we have to be thankful that we have elected officials who really want to hear our voices. And I also want to thank your leadership of the Golden Years Club. You guys have become a force in the community. And I've just been thankful to work with you guys and be here with you and all of our seniors here today. And I also want to thank the staff that's here today. You know, the, the, we're working very hard to get you guys what you needed for this community. And I really want to thank them because I work with them every day. And every last person over here is very dedicated to our community. So thank you. I've got to put a golden, golden, you know, golden in. This is important that, like, no, your voice matters. The fact that the Madam Chair is aware of this, this is, look, I, I, I've got to go, I, I've got a date. And, I, and I, I've got to go meet with some seniors, and this is important, your voice mattered. The fact that you guys felt that you did not, weren't being communicated with, that bothered me. You, you, it, it hurt me so bad, like, oh, how did we, how did we miss this? And there was an assumption that you were plugged in, but we weren't plugged in the way you needed to be. And so for that, again, I, as I began, I, and I apologize. I accept responsibility, but I will fix this. And trust me, hopefully we've got you guys this information, but we want to we want to make sure that we've addressed it. And again, I won't just say it. You just have to look at my fruit. Judge our fruit over the next year or so and see how, if we, you see plans, you see your things that says that, oh, they actually heard us, or did we just come get you food and just like, okay, you know, you have people come, you know, they campaign, like, okay. Or are we serious about what we say? So, you guys know better. Thank you all. Give yourselves a hand clap and we're going to get them. Welcome back, Douglas County. Again, Kelly Robinson, Commissioner of the Second District. Again, this was the conclusion of a two hour special edition of District Dialogue. Um, again, I really appreciate the seniors. Uh, very grateful dialogue. Obviously, affordable housing is something that was very important to them. You saw the exchange. It was about options. It's not just about tiny homes. It's not just about the big, you know, $3,000 an hour or $3,000 uh, a month um, private quarters. It was somewhere in the middle, right? So we're, we've been charged with coming up with solutions and options for our seniors. You baby boomers out there, I get it. We're going to get right on that, try to create an atmosphere in which that can be manifested uh, while I'm still in office for the next two years. In addition, public transportation is still important. Mobility, we realized that we, we missed it. We didn't do a good job of communicating to the outer parts of the county. 
I've always argued that we always are only communicating with our inner 15,000 citizens, but what about the other 85 voters, 85,000 voters? So we're going to work on that as well. So again, it is always about listening. But in this case, they didn't just want to be communicated with, they wanted to participate and be at the table. So Ms. Um, Madam President of the Golden Years, Ms. Madam Mickey Medina, thank you all. Ingrid Landis Davis, thank you as well. I heard you ladies loud and clear. And again, I'm committed to trying to create an atmosphere in which the needs that you've expressed are manifested during your lifetime. With that being said, I'm going to bid you good night to the next time we come again. My name is Kelly Robinson, Vice Chair of the Douglas County Board of Commissioners, Commissioner of District 2. Good night.